Every time we send a spacecraft to another world, our Earth-based life forms are going with us. No matter how well we try to keep them clean, a few stowaways will always come along for the ride. You'd think that years in the cold, hard vacuum of space, suffering extreme temperature changes and receiving brutal doses of radiation would be all it takes to sterilize any life caught on the outside of a lander or rover headed to Mars or Europa. Well, think again. Life just demonstrated that it's surprisingly ready to make the journey and it's happy to get back to work the moment conditions improve. Without protection, a human wouldn't last more than a minute or so in space. Step out of the void and all the air would rush out of your lungs from the vacuum. You'd asphyxiate from a lack of oxygen and pass out in a matter of seconds. Then you'd freeze. Oh, and further insult to injury, you'd be pelted by deadly radiation, not that you'd care anymore. Almost every life form on Earth would suffer a similar fate. Trees, fish, birds, tomatoes, you name it, they wouldn't last long in space. But there are other life forms that could survive. Hardy lichens, fungi, bacteria, and tiny animals that can survive in that kind of environment. To hibernate until conditions improve again. Earth is the best place in the solar system that we know of that life can flourish. There's nowhere else where water can be a liquid on the surface with its vast oceans, lakes, and rivers. And wherever we find water on Earth, we find life. The evidence is growing that there are vast oceans of water out in the solar system, in Jupiter and Saturn's icy moons, or underground lakes on Mars. These are the most scientifically fascinating places to visit in the solar system. The opportunity to find water and maybe even life is too great to pass up. Can life forms that evolved on Earth make the journey through space in hibernation, arrive at warmer, wetter conditions like the oceans on Europa or the underground lakes on Mars and spring back to life? The answer is yes. In fact, there seem to be many different critters that can do it. In August 2014, Russian cosmonauts placed a container onto the outside of the Zvezda module. This instrument is called Expose R2, and it looks like a multi-chambered space greenhouse. Into the experiment went tiny little habitats, containing bacteria, algae, lichens, mosses, and fungi, as well as various cell samples. No tardigrades, though. Some were put in the chamber with terrestrial dirt, and others were embedded into a simulated Martian regolith. Biologists scoured the planet for the most extreme life forms ever found, we're talking fungi and lichens who live in Antarctica, where only the most hardy life can endure, or mosses that live in extreme alpine conditions. Many of these life forms are thought to be some of the oldest ever found on Earth, like cyanobacteria and archaea, which have evolved to handle extreme conditions over billions of years. Others were chosen because they live in environments which are already similar to Mars, using trace amounts of carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere to form methane. Before the samples were sent to space, they went through rigorous tests here on Earth. For example, exposing some of the regular samples to Mars-like conditions, low pressure atmosphere, extreme temperature cycles, and ultraviolet radiation that match the amount of solar radiation that gets to Mars. During a spacewalk in October 2014, the cosmonauts removed the protective cover, and these samples of life were permanently exposed to the harsh environment of space. The near vacuum and lack of atmosphere, the intense ultraviolet radiation from the sun, and the extreme temperature changes as the station goes from night to day and back every trip around the Earth. In February 2016, the cosmonauts retrieved the exposed R2 experiment from outside the station, put the cover back on, and brought it inside. Then, on June 18, 2016, the samples came back to Earth with astronaut Tim Peake on board a Soyuz spacecraft. For two more years, scientists at 30 different research institutions across 12 different countries examined the results of the experiment. How well did the various life forms handle this brutal journey? And we'll get to that in a second, but first I'd like to thank William Walker, Tom Holloway, Candace Glade, Calvin Martin, and the rest of our 800 patrons for their generous support. They contribute so that you can see these videos and we can make them freely available to anyone who wants to learn about space. Join our community at patreon.com slash universe today and get in on the action. When the samples were examined, the results were surprising. 
The scientists had already chosen life forms that were known for their hardiness. But seriously, they went to space, ate nothing but vacuum and ultraviolet radiation for two years, and then came back to Earth. Almost all of their samples survived and shown signs of life when given better conditions. I mean, they'd taken a hit, but about 40% of a patch of fungi was still growing in one sample, for example. Lichens that were kept in the dark survived well and were able to get growing, while batches that were constantly in sunlight didn't fare so well. And good old hardy cyanobacteria came through the whole experience like a champ, whether it was raised on earth soil or Martian regolith with very little DNA damage. This is one organism we'll need to watch for when traveling to another world. Here's what one of the researchers had to say. Some of the organisms and biomolecules showed tremendous resistance to radiation in outer space and actually returned to Earth as survivors from space. Among other things, we studied archaea, which are unicellular microorganisms that have existed on Earth for over three and a half billion years, living in salty seawater. Our test subjects are relatives of theirs and have been isolated in the Arctic permafrost. They have survived in space conditions and are also detectable with our instruments. Such single-celled organisms could be candidates for life forms that might be found on Mars. Extreme life on Earth can live on Mars. It can survive the vacuum of space for at least two years, probably more. The hardiness of many life forms in the experiment gives more support to the idea of panspermia, the possibility that life in the solar system could have been traveling from world to world on board meteorites scooped up during asteroid impacts. Many life forms can survive the vacuum, radiation, and extreme temperatures of interplanetary travel and could snap out of their hibernation when they arrive at warmer, wetter conditions. Which means that if we ever do find life on Mars or in the oceans of Enceladus, we need to figure out if our life is related and how far back they branched off from each other. Maybe life on Earth started on Mars. Or maybe life across the solar system started here on Earth. Or maybe, in ancient times, life got started on Venus and it was able to escape before the runaway greenhouse effect kicked in. Now that we know that there are hardy forms of Earth life ready and willing to thrive on the red planet, we need to consider our plans to explore and colonize Mars more carefully. It's not just about cleaning spacecraft that could be exploring sensitive environments. We have life here that could colonize Mars it could taint the search for life on Mars. And at worst, our life forms could push Mars life out of its habitats. We've seen what invasive species can do here on Earth. Let's try to prevent that on Mars. Our next episode will be all about planetary protection, how to stop Earth life from infecting Mars and other worlds and vice versa. So we'll see you next week. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Once a week, I gather up all my space news into a single email newsletter and send it out. It's got pictures, brief highlights about the story, and links so that you can find out more. Go to universetoday.com slash newsletter to sign up. Did you know that all of my videos are also available in a handy audio podcast format? So you can have the latest episodes show up right on your audio device. Go to universetoday.com slash audio or search for Universe Today on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And I'll put a link in the show notes. And finally... Here's a playlist.